to grant to you. Like, yeah, if I don't care about how what I say makes a person emotionally feel if the purpose of the discussion is a disagreement. How you're like your emotional state from there is totally irrelevant to me. Do you know that that's a, a symptom? Of what? Psychopathy. <laughs> Psychopathy doesn't exist. It, it does. It doesn't. It's the lack of empathy for another's nope. feelings. Okay, so you're a psychologist, right? Yes. Okay. D do you think that psychopathy is actually a medical psychological condition and that you can identify it in the yes. DSM? Yes. They can now brain scan you and mm -hmm. tell if you have psych... Yes. Okay. Can you pull up the DSM-5 and show me where it says anything about psychopathy? I'm not talking about the DSM-5. I'm talking well, about... Well, then how do you categorize what is a psychological condition? You can get a brain scan and your gray matter would show up differently than somebody without psychopathy. When you're talking about brain scans, that's really brand new tech. That's the same thing as when people say that you can do a brain scan to determine a gender. You really can't. Because you have human Correct. variances in sexuality. The gender is, de is determined more by the no, hormonal the brain, makeup the in the body system. Brain matter cannot determine if somebody is a psychopath. But even if it could, psychopathy in and of itself has not even been demonstrated to be harmful to society. Psychopathy in and of itself could be a boon to society. For instance, you may need people who have completely unfeeling dispositions for certain jobs which need doing. I agree, because we are all tools, essentially, of the divine. Well, I mean, uh, God. Sure, you, yeah. you, in your yeah, ideology, would say, you would call it God. Yeah, I would say that we're all, we're all definitely in... in I you agree. Know, have a, there's have a the, there's, our there's creator, where our Venn diagrams are crossing. I believe I we are to, all tools. But I need to ask, it, just because I don't care what your emotional state is when we're having a discussion about something we disagree on, I don't understand why that would even indicate psychopathy. It's very common for stoic men to not care about the emotional status of a person who refuses to it's adhere to logic. It's very common of men to be abusive. It doesn't mean it's right. Yeah, but you're t you, now you're conflating two different things. So I would agree. Psychopathic well, individuals mm -hmm. are abusive. Yeah, but Just not because all abusive it's people are psychopaths. True. That's true. Some of them are narcissistic. Yeah, but not all abusive people are narcissists. Some of them are just trauma responding and they over... The it's, emotional, the, it's the degradation. Physical, psychological. It's the degradation. It's the calculated degradation of another individual without remorse Mm -hmm. feeling or care. It's not a trauma response, in mm -hmm. other words. Now, what you saw of me in the last show was me trauma responding. So I did hurt people's feelings, and I said things that were, oh, that you could say, convenient. abusive. But I really was, I have very complex traumas. Mm -hmm. I could spend yeah, but isn't it a lot awful, of time telling you But about isn't it, it awful convenient to say, when I do it, it's excused. When you do it, it's because you're a psychopath. Well, to be honest with you, you're a predator. I'm not. Well, you're not a predator? No. What, what makes me predatory and you not predatory? I don't go out seeking to hurt people. You do. Who do I go out to seek to hurt? Me. How did I seek to hurt you? You are seeking to show the followers that I am basically not worth living. No. Not worth speaking. Not are, worth breathing. What are you talking about? Not worth having an opinion. My opinion... Well, if your opinion is bad, then yes. The, your opinion... So, for, You are to, a very condescending person. Try to juxtapose yourself. Put yourself in my shoes for a second, okay? Let us assume for a second that I had some knowledge. Assume for a second... Well, they didn't, they didn't raise you right, but assume for... Reverted that, to yeah, something yeah, yeah, else. Okay, so anyway, back to this real quick. I was in the middle of talking. It's awful abusive of you to cut me off while back I'm speaking. Back your own medicine. I'm speaking. I'm giving you I'm back speaking. your own medicine. I, I don't respect you. I'm speaking. I don't respect your thought process. <laughs> so anyway... I literally don't respect so back, your thought I don't, process. Who cares what you respect? Who cares what you respect? I mean, do you want to Why should I care about you if you're you don't give a shit in. about me? I don't give a you're shit just about you. are cut in while we're if trying to talk? Yes, if you don't give a shit about me, I'm going to show you what it feels like to have somebody not give a shit about you, but I'm not going to gaslight you and pretend like I give a shit. I'm just going to tell you I don't give a shit don't about your... So there's a difference between I don't the give two a shit about you. You're a piece of the shit. You're only here because your sex life sucks. I actually do want to. Do you want to go there? Do yeah, you go, go there. there. You're only here because you abuse your children. Oh. Okay. I thought we weren't going to talk about... Well, hang on. You can dish it out, but you can't take it. I gave you explicit boundaries that you weren't just broke because I don't give a shit. Because I don't give a fuck. You didn't give me boundaries. <laughs> Get your wife on the phone. What would you like to talk to her about? I would like to ask her how the sex is. Okay. Boy, that's crazy. Come on. Let's, <laughs> I really would. 
Look, we got to. I can't. I was. We can call my ex-husband <laughs> if you want. He might answer. You never know. You two would get along. You'd be uh-huh. besties. He's a real winner, by the way. Look, if I mean, he probably if, is. He divorced you, right? No, I divorced him. Oh well, that I mean that actually makes more sense. If you want Andrew to respect the boundaries, you can't be slinging. But these here's the thing, again. Brian. He didn't give me boundaries. He didn't give me. Well, I gave him boundaries. He did not he, say you can't do this. You, you can't do said that. you're responsible for my Listen, emotional health. We can put the no button in the middle, and you can use it too if you would okay. like. Do you need yes, boundaries too and consent? Yes. Put do it you there. need a safe word? It's no. Put it there. So here's the boundary. Now you feel safe. You, you can say no whenever you want. Okay. When I hit the no, that means stop talking. Okay, okay. agree. Okay. Your ass on camera? I never signed anything that said I couldn't. So you're going to break the YouTube. TOS? What's the TOS? Nick, just intro if Terms you have to. Service. What is it? It means... You, we're it, on YouTube yeah. and Twitch. You can't show... You guys, I'm old. I don't know what these things are. You know what YouTube is. I don't know the it's rules. Stop lying. Lying Do TV. I seem like I follow rules? I'm, Let alone follow I'm not rules. rational to... Uh, mainstream society. I'm okay, not. So I'm listen, a divergent. Listen. You can be divergent and be rational. No, not yeah. necessarily. No, yes. not these days. No, you can't. Yes, you no, can. you literally can't. Yeah, you literally you, can. Uh, do you like do Trump? You literally are you know supporting what the word literally Trump? Literally means? Are you, it literally doesn't mean what you literally think. Are you supporting think. Trump? I'm asking you a question. Yes. Look at you. Of course. Okay, look it. There's an area our Venn diagram intersects. So what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Let's say. Okay. Let's just pretend. Okay. Trump was my dad. Uh huh. Let's just pretend. Yeah. Would you give me a little more respect? No. None? No. I, I would treat you exactly how you treat you. I, I usually match people's energy. So if, they're being, if they're being lunatic Same. assholes, then I'm a lunatic asshole. Same. Don't. It's that dangerous? Nick, you got My ass is literally again. that dangerous? Huh? My ass is literally that dangerous? Bro, you wouldn't do this. You do realize we're a show, right? We don't want to show that shit. You don't want to show ass? Then why do you have an OnlyFans? What does that even... What are you talking about? Why do you have an OnlyFans? We have a meme page. <laughs> we don't post why, anything on why it. Why do you target... It has nothing on it. Why do you target OnlyFans girls? What are you even talking about? Why do you target OnlyFans girls? What does that have to do with us not wanting for you to show nudity? You're, you literally target what? basically porn stars. What do, I don't even know what that means. You don't know what targeting a porn star means? You'd have to explain to me what that even means. Are most of your guests not in <laughs> the sex the industry? No. It's yeah. actually... we've gone through painstakingly all our episodes Mm -hmm. to get statistics, age, relationship status, all this stuff. Less than 30% of the guests that we've had on the show are involved in sex work. Who makes you the most money? The non-sex workers, actually. Our number one most viral moment wasn't a sex worker. And then our most viral moments in general typically have anything to do with sex workers. Oh, what is the most viral moments? You can't be showing your ass. Why? Honest, because I just said so. I can't show my ass on the internet. I do it all the time. Yeah, but you're not allowed to sexually assault people. Oh, was that sexual assault? That actually (laughs) technically was sexual assault. (laughs) Oh, well, now you know how I feel. Did somebody here sexually assault I I didn't say sexual, but but emotionally... You just sexually... You wouldn't be on this earth. That's fine. That's fucking (laughs) fine, because at least I could handle something (laughs) in the realm of fucking visual... Okay, I draw the line at sexual assault. Okay, so do I. Yeah. So you come over to me and lift up your whole dress and try to move your ass into yeah, my face. Feel? That's sexual assault. So when you try to impose that your is hierarchical not sexual assault. ideologies to me, that is energetic not assault. Not sexual assault. 
Why did my body register the last time I, I was here with you as a registered. rape? My body <laughs> registered it as a rape. Did I emotionally <laughs> rape you? <laughs> yes. Yes. You did. Whoa, 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 whoa. Humans come. The last episode, the same exact way that I had to emotionally process That's not what, every single repeat, rape that I've experienced. A, you said that you f you were what? Emotionally raped by Andrew. Uh. And then he's laughing about affecting a woman feeling emotionally raped by him as if he doesn't give a shit how he do affects you usually anybody. When people emo do you usually try to sexually assault people you feel have emotion <laughs> done that to you? I assault Christine people who assault $100. me. Hold on, Three, you need to cut Andrew off more and not allow him to speak. This is how you can win the debate. You need to frustrate him and not allow him to make a point and don't answer anything direct. Okay, yes, hold on. There's another one coming in. We'll let the original one come in. Thank you, Christine, I guess. Naruto 2.0 donated $100. Only in decadence is this possible. Humans can't easily impart knowledge to offspring. Individuals pigeonholed. Please, sure, let your child touch the fire. You wouldn't want to pigeonhole them. All Pathetic. right, Naruto, thank you, man. Nick, something about Grid 1? His TTS did not come through? Are we good? Oh, okay. And then we have Pelagic here. Pelagic, this is what a psychopath looks like. Okay. So, thank you, Pelagic. Now, in, in page 71 of your book, you say basically all the greats, including myself and Jesus, with whom you categorize yourself, with whom I have quite a spicy relationship with now, wink, wink. What did you mean by that? Because I talk about, if you actually read my whole book, I talk about that one of my reoccurring fantasies was basically something that I had tried to repress my whole time of being a Christian was a fantasy of Jesus sitting on the throne and me essentially riding him face to face. Mm -hmm. And I was always shaming myself and pushing that fantasy away until finally the death of a friend in my arms basically fucked me up so bad that everything that I thought was true exploded. And I finally started allowing in every part of me, including the dark and the things that I had previously disowned from myself and shamed. I let it come in. And what I realized was that my sexuality wanted to reintegrate with my spirituality and my spirituality at the time because I was coming out of a Christian ideology my spirituality at the time was the conceptualization of my creator of my divinity as being incarnate in Jesus and so what I realized was in allowing that fantasy to be alive in my body was that I simply wanted oneness and face-to-face, eye-to-eye contact with the fullness of God. And so, so Jesus was your boyfriend, essentially, in your head? My husband. Your husband? Yes. Okay. And you wanted to sleep with him? Yeah. Not blasphemous at all, you don't think? No. No, he created sex, and he created me. To have and sex with him? Yes, we're very intimate. How intimate? Very. Okay. So intimate, I would say that it's no longer me running my life. <coughs> it's him. Jesus runs your life? Christ consciousness, yes. Oh, Christ consciousness. Yeah. What is that? The empowered consciousness. Basically, the antithesis of victim consciousness. Yeah. Couple, if she's cool with it. Mm-hmm. If she wants. Just so you sure. can hear directly sure. from. Sure. But would you say that Andrew coached her, like, train, like coached her, you know? Into victimhood. That like he's controlling like puppet strings, like. Do I need to say that? You you don't have to say that. 
Because you did? You already said it for me? We're just asking. I'm just asking. Because well, she's going to come on and say, Andrew's dope. Andrew's okay. awesome. Okay. Well, Love then Andrew. if we already know what she's going to say, and but we already is, know that there is a opposing she theory the that supposedly she, she has the there is right a now. thing whereby females are fawning. Been there. Been a wife a couple times. Um, so if you think it's worth it to have her on, we can. If you, you don't, You asked for her, not, not me. I'm, I'm simply... I'm deferring to you because you're her Isaiah leader. Isaiah Fluke donated $100. Jesus would have hung her on the cross. Isaiah, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Should we do a voice call or is she set up on the like, Discord? Maybe? I don't think it would be easy for her to move over to Discord. With I'm, just, oh, I'm, just I'm deferring to you. If you can be a representative of what she would say and you guys already no, let's get her on the posed the her. opposing yeah, possibility. Let's just ask if she's cool with... With the, with I'll ask her. Yeah. You could even just have her question in or comment in. Yeah. But I thought that that was her response to what I had said. I thought she already made her response in that he, you're a 12 out of 10, apparently. You're an amazing husband. Yeah, but I think if you hear it directly from her... That was... Was that not well, directly like, from her? You hear, you hear it in her voice. I, I saw her say... I think... What uh, would... What... I'm asking... What difference? Yeah, I'm not in her that. opinion, no, he's mind. a 12 out of 10. Is Rachel going to go off? She just said, read her my text from last night. And I'm not, no, we're not going in. Okay. No, that's not All happening. right. Okay. So we can, we, I, I accept the fact that from Rachel, your wife's perspective, you are a above and beyond husband. You're an amazing husband. Okay. Is that uh, correct? She thinks so, yeah. She thinks, she thinks so. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm happy for her. Killer of Cereal donated $100. No BS. We have a sign in my town that says, Jesus comes quickly. It all makes sense now. This woman lives in an extremely fanatical, fantastical world where objective reality isn't rough. Killer of Cereal, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for the uh, TTS. Do you have a response to Killer? I'm not really honestly sure what he's trying to say. The whole fanatical, fantastical world where objective reality doesn't exist, that whole thing? Well, that was his opinion. I'm not going to argue with somebody's opinion of me. Okay. All right. He's, he's, has, uh, he's entitled. So I do wanna, there's a, actually, before I get back to one thing, uh, in an email you sent me, you said you have personas like Eminem, Slim Shady, Marshall Mathers. It's a thing for us genius black ghetto slave souls inside sexy white bodies. Well... What? So it goes back to my talk about white supremacy and trying to explain that Wait, it's an energetic matter. It's an ideology. It's a matter of ideology. Wait, we did want to hear it, but then you hit the, 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 the no button. Well, because it did not seem that you really wanted to understand. It seemed that you wanted to propagate a particular ideology, and that's exactly what I was trying to talk about. But I wasn't... Was it a... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine from my perspective right that i see that there's a whirlpool and you're in a boat and everything that goes near this whirlpool gets sucked down and i say listen you're in this boat but if you go towards that whirlpool it's going to suck you down and you go no 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 listen from my perspective it's not a whirlpool it's a, I don't know, fucking Zazzly Baz. And I go, no, stupid. It's a whirlpool, and you're going to get sucked down into it, and you're going to die. Don't do that. And you go, no, nope, I'm going to do it anyway. And you just go out, and you get sucked down the whirlpool, right? Mm -hmm. That's how it is with ideologies, too. So when somebody says to me, they're like, ah, it's just my ideology, therefore it's just my opinion. And so therefore, you trying to say anything about it isn't correct. It's like, ah, no, I think it is. I think it's fine to say, see that vortex there? That so makes you... no, hang on, hang on. So <laughs> that little whirlpool or whatever that you're about to go down, right? Just trying to go, ah, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, so you're trying to be my daddy? No, I'm not trying to be your daddy. I would do that for a total stranger. Really? Yeah. Interested in being protected by you. It's not an interest of you. It's an interest for me. So, Whether or not you're a person who says, I'm going to pour gasoline on myself and light a match because I want to do this, because I want to be immolated and completely cook myself, and I see you going for that match, I'll still stop you anyway. 
but the damage that you did to me in the last show, if I was not such an emotionally stable person, I would have gone home and killed myself. Okay, so the th you know it's really funny. I there's didn't a feel lot of protected times, by you there's a lot of, I'm not there to protect you. I thought you just no, said that you were. No, you're not listening to what I'm saying. I'm saying that I'm making a comparison to an ideology and saying to you that I'm not going to keep your fragile ideology intact or not destroy the fragile ideology if it's bad because that in some way is going to be emotionally painful. That's cognitive dissonance. That's, that's what that is. It's, it is emotionally painful to shrug off bad ideologies. That's true. It's just like saying, okay, my leg is broken. Okay, well, it healed wrong. I got to break it again so it heals right. It's the same thing. And the more you propagate bad ideology, the more you're going to see your ideology get broken over and over and over as the leg gets reset time and time and time again. You call that emotional grape, right? I call it logic and reason. Okay. I, I got a couple questions. You said that you went home and wanted to harm yourself because of your experience on the show? No, I was saying that if I was less emotionally stable, I could see how I would do that. We've had over a thousand people on the show. They're when all you, fine. When you sexually assault They're men, fine. couldn't that be the result of that too? Did that you feel in danger? You know, yeah, well, yeah, of course, yes. Of course, any woman who's not my wife, who in any way tries to put mm -hmm. sections of her body near mm -hmm. me like that mm -hmm. in a sexually provocative way is fucking dangerous as hell, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm just They're horribly I'm dangerous. I'm just curious. Had Andrew done something similar and he, like, exposed himself? Yeah, went over and just whipped it out. That would have like, been okay. Would you... I would be comfortable with that. Oh, my God. Do you think most women would? I'm not most women. Right, but <sighs> Andrew's not no, like you. Here's the Andrew's thing. not like but you. But here's the thing. That's not passive aggressive. That is you literally showing me exactly what you're trying to do. When you use psychological tactics and emotional manipulation based off of my trauma responses, that is passive aggressive. That is then you trying to manipulate and hurt me. Rather than, I would literally rather you pull down your pants and put your dick in my face. Then I know what I'm dealing with. I did not know what I was going to be dealing with in the last show. Yeah, so but, it felt like a manipulation and an emotional rape yeah, because so I, I did understand. not know. I thought I was yeah. literally coming on a dating podcast. So I can understand from, from the perspective of saying that you'd rather see immediate action other than what you would consider to be passive aggressive or manipulative. I would hang just on, rather on, on. see, put your cards on the table. <laughs> when you're saying manipulative tactics, you're saying you would much rather see somebody be physically aggressive. Yes. Sure, I can understand that. That at least makes sense to me. Yeah. But isn't it also a form of passive aggressive manipulation to say, because I have trauma responses to perceive things, you don't know anything about me, you, there was no way for you to ever determine what these trauma responses would be, that me just having a normal conversation with you like I would anybody else on this show and have done a thousand times, isn't that a form of manipulation? Well, you had disclosed to me that you were not affected emotionally by mm -hmm. anybody, So really. did you. Same thing you I'm said. Deeply, I'm deeply emotionally affected by people. No, what you said to me was, you said, listen, this isn't a big deal, right? This conversation in this context doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to me. That's what you said. When? But as we're, you said, this doesn't matter. I have no respect for you. And if I was a less emotional person, I would have gone home and off myself. I can handle it, right? No, no, I was not saying that I had no emotion. I was saying if I had less emotional intelligence and tools to process those emotions, I could understand with this bullying that people experience, which I had not honestly experienced anything like this before, nothing like it at all. Yeah, I've never experienced anything like that either. Yeah. I've never experienced well, a woman trying to, to sexually assault me. So now at least I feel like we're on the same playing field. Yeah, no, it's not the same playing field to I, physically I, sexually assault somebody versus your perception of guy made argument which hurt my feelings, therefore he emotionally graped me. Okay. That's absurd. Okay. That's like not in the same universe. Okay. Yeah. All right. You win? Do you want me to tell you you win? I mean, yeah. Is that? Yeah, you is know that, what? Yeah, say, say is Andrew. So all I'm trying you... to do is literally get to the point of, do you want me to get on my knees and submit? No. I, all I want you to do is engage with the arguments. That's it. So that you can monetize fucking with me. No, so that I can understand your worldview. You understand my worldview. Really? That's because why you're I, picking it apart. Every time I apart. ask you a question about it, 
I lead to the next, to the next, to the next, and I still don't actually get coherent answers. Oh, yeah, I stole your pen. <laughs> and so you don't want to tell me what your ideology Rude. is? <laughs> I don't want to tell my brain that you give a shit about understanding me because it's not actually true. Yeah, I w listen, I would not be here if I didn't give a shit about other False. people's worldviews. No, it's not. False. I promise what's you I would not job, be here. What's your job, Andrew? What's your credentials? I'm a robotics mechanic. A robotics mechanic? Mm -hmm. What's your degrees in? I don't have a degree. How are you a robotics mechanic and you don't have a degree? Because I had an apprenticeship and it's a trade. Okay, so similar to life coaching, let's say? No, it's not similar to life coaching, let's say. <laughs> it's a trade, though. Yeah, it's a real trade. So life coaching is not a real trade? Uh, I, I don't know. Do people make a living doing it? Sure. So what is your definition of a trade? Uh, so to me, a trade apprenticeship would be like an applied skill. So, so life coaching isn't an applied skill. So why would you have to go? Skill. Why would you have to go to a trade school to learn how to do it then, if it's not a skill that you have to well, learn I don't and know apply? That those are trade schools. Give me the definition of a trade. Aren't you learning how to a skill to perform a trade that you can monetize? Anything that you can monetize and you have to learn how to do it, mm -hmm. I would call that a, a trade, trade skill. Okay. Right? Well, I mean, if that's your definition, I'll concede to the definition. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I am. So you have no degrees in psychology. You have no ministry degrees. You've never been to any ministry that's, appeals to authority. Mm -hmm. so, uh, what a two-year. The point this. is, you're arguing Let's with me about I was psychology, a seventh grade, spirituality, yeah. and all of these things that I've literally at least gone to trade school so for. So what? What would that matter? Let's say I was a sixth-grade dropout and I cleaned carpets for a living. In what world would it make me wrong to question the things that you say if you're wrong about them, regardless of whatever my degrees were in? Because you are questioning my authority as a psychologist so, when you're not a psychologist. Why do I need to be the thing to question the thing? It's like if saying you, you can't question the medication your doctor gives you unless you're a doctor. Like what? Questioning is one thing, but having the condescendence to actually believe that you are right over what I am trained to be right in, that's a little crossing a line, I would say. What's the line that you're crossing? Your tone. The tone? <laughs> it's the wrong tone? Because I'm, I'm actually, tone, am I, tone I am you? actually the authority in everything that you're talking about psychologically and spiritually and scholastically. So you need to get yourself in line <laughs> and question me as a student of those things. Because okay. I'm actually the teacher. You're the student. Well, Mr. Bulle donated $100. Communique from the Inquisition Patriarchy. Grand Inquisitor, have you received the autographed blue-white cup with certificate of authenticity? I am performing an audit of our inventory. Not yet. Thank you, Mr. Boulay, but no. I Appreciate don't. it, Mr. But anyway, okay. yeah, so by this metric, right, if, if, if somebody, let's say, is a boat maker, right, and they make for you a boat, and you say, hey, it doesn't float, and they go, don't question me, I make boats. So let me ask you something. Do you heal people's trauma? I'm not so sure that you can heal anybody's trauma. Yeah, you can. You can. Really? Well, yeah. Then how come you haven't healed your own? I, I literally have. Well, then why do you keep on talking about how you're traumatized all the time? Because trauma is an ongoing thing that we continually have to process. So you just re-traumatized every day? Yeah, and then I have to process it every night. And that's how I don't continue it on to the next day. Pre-traumatized, and then every day you heal yourself of your trauma. Yes, every night before I go to bed. Okay, so all of your old traumas that you keep appealing to is being problematic, right? Divorces, things well, like the, this. The, the, You've the bigger, healed from all of the those, The bigger right? catastrophic traumas take a little bit more time. They're more complex. They don't take one night. How many nights do they take? It just depends. Okay, do, so do you, you want to talk about a specific so, trauma and yeah, how long so it took how me? Long, the divorce wasn't the trauma. What was the trauma? Being with the man. How would you heal that? It's been very hard so getting it's not away. Heal it is healed in the sense that do you really want to go into it? It's really dark. Well, when you say healing, no. What I want to get into is this idea of healing trauma. When you say, so, do you heal trauma? And I go, I'm not sure you can heal trauma. You go, well, you can. And I say, well, do you want if to you can, to you? it's like saying. Do you, there's a protocol in my book. Do you want to talk about how it's done? Okay. Okay. I created a protocol to explain to you how to do it. GMD Jim donated $100. This is precisely the result of the closure of asylums back in the 80s. 
We now embrace this stuff. Honey, you are not trained. You have been indoctrinated by other crazy people. Okay, so Thank right you. here in, on page 57, my method, processing severe trauma. Do you want me to read you the couple pages? It's only two pages, it looks like. Well, or you can just give me a summarization. Well, I'd just rather read it. Okay. In my relentless study of anthropology, sociology, and the psychology of various individuals, I had come to realize that it was never the actual events situations or words spoken that traumatized people for the most part rather it was their uncontrolled obsessive mental recalling of the situation than the meaning they assigned to it all that really had the power to either chronically or just acutely traumatize the person in other words there was a reason some people were just deeply shaken and grieved by certain things but then seemed to move on just fine while others seemed to get stuck severely traumatized for a lifetime it had nothing to do with how bad quote unquote the traumatic event was or not it had to do with how the person felt and then handled it after the fact as i mentioned previously i asked the infinite to show me a way to process the loss of Steve and how to get rid of the graphic images from that night so that I wouldn't get PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh -huh. or any other long-term negative effects. Once I asked the question, I started receiving inspired thoughts that ended up being the practical step-by-step -step solution to this problem. I had been trying to help people recover from abuse and other traumas for years and never actually believed it was possible. Up until then, I believed the best people could do was learn to cope with their traumas so they didn't completely ruin their lives. But now my mind was unlocked and I was asking my higher, infinite self better questions and believing there had to be a way. This is what was downloaded into my mind from the infinite. Okay, this is the method that came through. Okay. Place a meaning on the event that feels good, no matter how far you must reach. Remember how I told you that the meaning we place on events is very powerful and completely within our power. I decided I would believe that everything had happened exactly as it was supposed to. With Steve, my unborn baby, my marriage, my kids, and my old life that had come to an end, I also chose to believe this about all the rest of things, including my childhood and being born to my parents in the dysfunctional family. I would believe it all happened as it was supposed to. I would believe that I was an infinite spiritual being who had chosen to incarnate into this human existence because there were things that I wanted to experience that would deepen my understanding and love for myself. That's called cope. It's That's called literally finding coping. a meaning. That is doing everything you can and then you have to, to grab... take the event and pretend it's something other than no, what the event is. No, that it's, is cope. It's Yes, it is. Agree to disagree. Grab a happy image and put it into the thought nursery. Now, if you read my book, you would know what the thought nursery is. The thought nursery. To let the better feelings associated with the happy image emerge. Breathe into these better feelings and savor them. I did this as many times a day as necessary. So the image was of my friend dead on the table, basically blue with intubated and everything. They made me go back and see him dead on the table. And his mom wanted me to delay the coroner from taking his body. That's the only reason I had to see him dead. I don't recommend people do that. There's no fucking point. But anyway, I had to go and see this man who died in my arms first. And then they tried to resuscitate him, obviously, intubated him. He blue on the table mom Be free. i had to tell steve she met me at the hospital but on her way there she was begging me to stall the coroner from taking his body because they wanted time for the brother to come and be able to see i don't know why people want to traumatize themselves by doing this again i don't recommend forcing yourself to see your loved one yeah, dead. That's not necessarily trauma. That's part of the closure process. Okay, well, for some it is, but for a lot of people, they get stuck on those images. For me, I got stuck with him, blue, intubated, yeah, dead on the table. that's because people have a disconnection so I, between what is life and Do you want to hear death. how I got over that and yeah, didn't okay. get PTSD? Okay. Okay. So people have a huge disconnection from what is life and what is death. Not everybody, and by the way, people used to have to deal with death a lot more. They used to have to deal with dead bodies a lot more, things like this. I don't think that it's ingrained to be tra traumatic necessarily. It's something that people just don't really have to deal with very much. So it becomes not personal. It always becomes somebody else's dealing with it. You're just dealing with a memory. But the thing is, is that when you say things like, take this thing that actually happened and put a fun, happy spin on it, so it's something that you remember fondly instead, that is an embrace of delusion.
So how's that not cope? I was asking how me or Andrew or the show is woman hating. I did not get an adequate response. Because I'm a woman and I've shared a lot with you and it's never been met with any sort of understanding or empathy. It's only been met with hostility and like this weird commitment to not understanding me. And Can I just say the same thing to you? Sure. No empathy, no understanding. Sure. If that's uh, how you feel. So can you, I mean, what's that Aristotle quote about crying? Crying is one of the ways it's, that the body processes the trauma in real time. That way we don't hold on to it. Or is it a way to appeal to emotion to try to get people onto your side without actually having a strong foundation or position for what you're actually trying to say and argue? That is a way that people who lack genuine empathy, that is a way that they use appeared emotion to manipulate others. But my emotion is actually genuine. Okay. Well, I don't see how that has anything to do with a woman hating. I'm a healer as women were gifted with special abilities to take on look these are words that you said gmd jim donated 100 dollars trust not a woman when she weeps for it is her nature to weep when she mm. wants her will socrates socrates yeah okay well if you're not comfortable with me crying i'm gonna have to go because some of the things I we're mean, talking if, about if you want makes to me cry, cry if that's fine I'm still just trying to understand, aside from how you felt, I don't, if there's something I don't, you can point to. I don't to. think that you are trying to understand anything. I think that you are trying to bring a point across. So just, just say what your point is that you would like to prove, and then I can just submit, and we can move on. I'm, I'm not really sure if that's what I'm trying to do, but... Earlier in the show, you said that me and Andrew are woman-hating. The show is woman-hating. So I'm asking you to point to something specific. I, 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 I keep Andrew, doing it, and you don't want to accept it. So I don't see the point in continuing the conversation. I told you that I am a woman, and I didn't feel safe, and I don't feel safe in your presence. Uh, well, Hence, woman-hating, because I am a representative of woman. Well, so if I'm a man and I feel uncomfortable in your presence, does that mean you're a man-hater? You can say that if that's how you feel. Would you agree or disagree with that statement? That I am a man-hater? Because I feel unsafe in your presence. I would validate if that's how I made you feel. At least. But would it make you a man-hater? Or would you be like, no... I'm not possibly, a man-hater. Possibly. Because if, of how if, I made if man, you feel. If man is taking your form, then I yes. I male. If, I am a male. If man is taking your form, then yes, there is hatred there because it's not you as a soul. It's you as an ideology coming at me and not inviting me to feel safe in your presence. Didn't you just... So me and Andrew were sitting here. Mm -hmm. We were sitting down. We were just talking. At moments, it was a lively conversation, but we were remaining in our seats. Was it... Andrew, or was it me, or was it you, who got out of their seat, came all the way over here, mm -hmm. got into our physical space, and, I mean, Andrew's sitting to my left. Who was that? Was that us, or was it you? It was me invoked by you. How did I... So you're saying we consented to that? I am saying that you didn't give a shit about my personal space emotionally, so I didn't what? give a shit about your physical space. You're, and so that doesn't make any sense I gave you a taste of your own medicine and you didn't like it. 
and was so the medicine you, which we were dispensing. So you could feel what it feels like to be what disrespected. What was the medicine you claim we were dispensing? Disrespect. You, Times oh. where there was sexual assault. Let's not forget that. In any case, too. so when it comes to your safety, and this being evidence of woman hating, yeah. we've remained here. While you might disagree with what we say, you got out of your chair, yeah. walked around the table. We yeah. didn't know if you were going to strike us or what you were going to do. You were scared. Did I scare you? Why are you smiling when you say that? That's interesting. Because I, it makes me feel more safe to know that, that maybe I have some sort of power in your presence. You do realize women have capacity for violence? I'm not a fighter, you could say. I, well, hold on. We don't know that. Like, well, you could have come over here, smacked me in the face. Eula sees the pagan donated $100. What did you think coming on a podcast debate meant? A debate is adversarial in nature. When you tone police, it equates to you have nothing to say and the purpose to derail the conversation. So, I mean, can I ask you a question? So you, as retribution, you wanted to make us feel unsafe in the physical space. Correct. And that's why you got out of your chair. Correct. Walked all the way Correct. around here. And, I mean, we didn't know if you were going to try to strike Andrew. Correct. He's closer. Correct. But you essentially pulled up your... Correct. Your yes. dress. Yes. And put his, yes. your ass right in his yes. space. Yes. So I wanted you to understand height of how you guys affect me emotionally and spiritually, it was like that. So do you think other forms of, let's, I mean- I'm I would rather even, you on, beat me. On. I would literally no, no, rather you on. punch me in the well, face. I'm not interested in doing that. So hold on. Would you say that even if I don't categorize what you did specifically as a violent act, using your- Wilson's wife donated $100. Wow, that was quite a journey. We've been through vibrations, colonialism, feminism, scam, black slave souls locked in sexy white bodies, spores, tears, showing us, riding Jesus D1CK. All right, Wilson's wife, thank you, appreciate it. If somebody is making you feel unsafe in your mental or emotional space, is violence justified as retribution if it makes you feel unsafe? Physical violence makes you feel unsafe in the emotional or psychological space? Yeah, it's called eye for an eye. You reap what you sow. So, just so I understand this correctly, you would have also been justified to, for example, try to physically assault Andrew in that moment also? I believe I would, yes. Right. Would you have been legally justified? Yeah, I believe I could get away with it. Megadeth 188 uh, donated $100. This is what she does. She is the first to attack people personally, then she cries to gain sympathy. Yeah, she I, is a manipulator. That's why she told you she wait, might harm 